Alright, hello and welcome everybody to another physics uh, video lecture. Today we are going to be talking about centripetal forces. Alright, so let's jump right into this. Okay, today we're going to be talking about centripetal force. And if you couldn't tell from the loop in that roller coaster, we're talking about what happens when things move in a circle. Okay, so we're going to have to uh, remember a few things about circles. Number one, what is the circumference of a circle? Okay, if you remember, the circumference of a circle is the distance around a circle. It's the outside distance around a circle. And the way that we calculate that is with this lovely equation that I'm sure you remember. Okay, the circumference of a circle equals 2 times pi times r. r is the radius of the circle. Okay, so make sure that you write this down. This is very important. Uh, if you don't remember pi, pi is 3.14, and then a lot of other numbers that never repeat. Uh, it's a constant, and you don't need to remember it because there's a button on your calculator that gives you pi, which is awesome. 2 times pi times the radius equals the, cir uh, the circumference of a circle. Now, something you probably haven't heard is the tangent of a circle. What is the tangent of a circle? Okay, The tangent of a circle is a line that is at a right angle to the radius. So to find the tangent, all you do is find the radius, boom, draw a line that is a right angle to it. This is the tangent line to a circle. Notice, here's the radius, and there's the right angle right there. Tangents of a circle are special because they only touch the circle once. Uh, any other line would actually cut the circle two times. Write this down. Beautiful. Okay, so what we're talking about today is also known as uniform circular motion. Okay, it's what we, we see this in tons of places. Uh, uh, planets um, orbiting around suns, moons orbiting around planets. We see it in a million different places. Anything that's spinning around experiences uniform circular motion. When you turn your car, when anything turns, it's experiencing some part of uniform circular motion. So, what's the definition? It is the motion of an object that has a constant speed, but that is moving around in a circle. Now, this definition is really important to pay attention to. Okay, what's important is that you see that we're moving with a constant or another name for constant is uniform. Like if you have a job where you wear a uniform, it's the same for everybody, it's constant, okay? Speed. So the object has a constant speed, its speed does not change. But the trick here is that we're dealing with centripetal force. In order for there to be force, there has to be acceleration. And even though the object is moving with a constant speed, it is accelerating. Why? Remember I told you that we would see this at some point? It's because it's not changing speed, but it's changing directions. Remember, velocity is speed with a direction. So if your speed changes, that's acceleration. That's the one we know, speeding up and slowing down. But if your direction changes, you are also accelerating. And that's what we're looking at today, acceleration from a change in direction. That's uniform circular motion. All right, so let's jump into this. The first thing we're going to talk about is velocity, okay? We call this velocity tangential velocity. This is a very fun word that I have trouble saying, tangential, okay? We call it tangential because the velocity is always tangent to the circle. That's why we learned that word. So you can see it right here. The blue line is the radius of the circle, okay? And as this object is spinning around, notice that the red line is the velocity. The red line is always tangent to the blue line, meaning the red line is always 90 degrees. And this is the way that your velocity goes. Um, if you want uh, to think about how this works, um, think about those old school, uh, like, uh, what are they called? Slingshots, like the ones you spin around, right? If you're spinning something around and it stops right there, I don't know if you guys can see this, you're spinning around and you stop, okay? Whatever object is, phew, is gonna fly tangentially to wherever you stop, right? If you spin around and stop right here, this object is gonna go whoosh, 
and fly forward. If I spin around and stop right here, the object is gonna go straight down. If I spin around and stop right here, I don't know if you can see that, the object's gonna go straight up, okay? The velocity is always tangent to the circle. So how do we calculate it? This is where it gets fun. We know that velocity equals distance divided by time. So, to find the tangential velocity, we need the distance. Well, the distance is going around the circle once. And what do we call the distance around the circle? The circumference. And we already found that. It's 2 times pi times r. That's our distance around the circle. Okay? And this big T is the time it takes to complete one revolution. Right? So we have our tangential velocity, the radius of the circle, and the time it takes to complete one revolution, meaning one go around. Okay? That's what a revolution is. Isn't that fun? Anybody want to guess what units we use to measure it? If you said meters per second, you'd be right, because it's a velocity. Write all this down. Yay. All right, so let's do a practice problem. All right, we have a CD. Uh, if you guys don't remember, CDs are what uh, old people like myself listen to music on as we were growing up, okay? You can probably find them in a museum somewhere. But a CD spins around, all right? On this CD, we have a little ladybug, and a ladybug is riding on the edge. We want to know how fast it's going. So let's write down what we know. This CD has a diameter. Diameter, ooh, let me use black. I'm gonna save the purple, I'm saving the purple. Okay, so it has a diameter of 0.12 meters. It spins around one revolution, takes 0.1 seconds. And if it rides on the edge of the disc, we want to know how fast it's going. And we want to know that VT. Remember, V with a little T, this T just means tangential. All right. So let's do it. Our equation that we just learned is uh, VT equals 2 pi r divided by the time. So we plug our numbers in. VT equals 2 pi times 2 times pi times r. Ah, do we know the r? Are you yelling at the screen? Very good, you should be. We don't know the radius. We know the diameter. And remember, the diameter of a circle, okay, is all the way across. This is the diameter. We don't want the diameter, we want the radius, which is only half of that distance around. So, in order to answer this, we gotta take 0.12 and divide it by two. This is something you should let your calculator do. Let me pull over my calculator. Oh, look at this. Look at this guy right here. Okay, can you guys see this? Sorry, it's kind of written over, but look at this. Point, clear all, point one, two, divided by two equals point zero six. So our radius is zero point zero six meters. You see that? Point one, two, divided by two is point zero six. It's not point six. Use a calculator. So the next thing we're going to do, I hope you guys can see this, is we're just going to plug these numbers in. So we have... 2 times pi times 0 0.06, our radius, uh -huh. divided by the time it takes to go around, 0 0.1. Again, I'm going to bring the calculator back up. I know it's kind of hard to see, okay? Um, here it is. So watch this. So I'm going to go 2 times pi. Where's pi on this thing? Are you kidding me? Is it moving that pi? What kind of calculator is this? Oh, this is where... There it is. I couldn't see it. Right there. It was underneath the T. See it right there? There you go. 2 times pi times 0 0.06. Hit enter. Ah, did I hit escape? Equals 0 0.0377. 0 0.377. And we divide that by 0 0.01. So I'm going to take my answer and I'm going to go divide it by... I know this is a, a little convoluted here, guys, so I appreciate you guys staying with me. There we go. Point, well, point one or point one. Point three seven seven. 
divided by 0.1 gives us 3.77. So again, the trick here is to remember that pi is just a button on your calculator and you can hit it. Always do the top and the bottom math of your fractions first, find that number, and then put this into the calculator. And you get 3.77 meters per second because it's a velocity. All right? C'est bon? Write this down. Okay. So now we know the velocity, okay? But what I just told you is that the velocity, even though the speed is constant, is always changing. So if we have a constantly changing speed, we have acceleration, okay? And we call that centripetal acceleration, all right? This is a change of the velocity, or here the change of that tangential velocity. A couple things, this word, centripetal. Anybody notice what the first uh, six letters of this looks like? They look a lot like the word center, and that's because they mean center. Centripetal literally means in Latin center seeking. So this acceleration always points straight to the center. So this is a big takeaway and something we're going to draw in a second. Your velocity is always tangent, that's the pink line, but your acceleration always points to the center of the circle, that's the blue line. Okay. Again, center seeking means it always points to the center, remember that. And our equation here it is the centripetal acceleration, a little c, equals that tangential velocity, vt. This is not time, this just means tangential velocity, squared, divided by the radius. Isn't that fun? And our units, same as before, are meters per second squared. Why? It's an acceleration. Everybody good? Write this down. Now let's do a problem. Three. Okay, so the ladybug is going at a speed of 3.77 meters per second. We just found that. So our VT is equal to 3.77 meters per second. And the CD has a diameter of 0.12 meters, which means we know it has a radius of 0.06 meters. We don't really care about the diameter. We care about that radius, which is the diameter divided by 2. And it spins around one revolution is equal to 0.1 second. That's our big T for time. What's its acceleration? Well, all you got to do here is our acceleration is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. We plug our numbers in. That means our tangential velocity is 3.77 squared divided by the radius, 0.06. Put this into our calculator. I'll try to do this quickly and painlessly. Let me see if I can do this here. If I clear this, 3.77, and on this calculator, the squared is just right there. See, it says a squared. Put that, it gives you squared, and that's equal to 14.2. So the top here, 3.77 squared, is 14.2 divided by 0 0.06. And we go back, and you put this into the calculator. You know how to divide with the calculator. This gives me 236.7 meters per second squared. Yes. Oh, write this down. Very important. All right. So this brings us to what we've wanted to talk about the whole time. We found the velocity. Using the velocity, we find the acceleration. Uh, and now, oh, here's a little fun fact. The moon orbits around the Earth with a very fast speed. The moon is moving at 1,000 meters per second, but its acceleration is actually super, super small. It's only 0 0.003 meters per second squared. Isn't that fun? It's got a really fast speed and a really low acceleration. All right, so what causes an object to accelerate? All right, do you remember this? Why do things speed up, slow down, and change directions? The answer to that is unbalanced forces. Remember, unbalanced forces are acceleration, right? If your force equals, or if your acceleration equals zero, then there's no total force. You don't speed up, you don't slow down, you don't change directions. But if your forces are unbalanced, like here, we know that because force equals mass times acceleration, if there is an acceleration that does not equal zero, then the force cannot equal zero, right? So we have some kind of force. 
We call this force centripetal force. It is the force that makes bodies follow a curved path. And this doesn't have to mean, remember, we're not talking about, you don't have to go around in a complete circle to experience centripetal force. Anytime you turn, your body is experiencing centripetal force because you're on a little bit of a circle. When you turn your car, if you're driving, you turn your car, that is the corner or a piece. That's funny, circles don't have corners. But this is a piece of a circle. Whenever you turn, you're feeling centripetal force. I'll talk about that in just a second. Let's calculate it first, okay? So the equation is super easy. Force equals mass times acceleration. So to find centripetal force, we use mass times centripetal acceleration. It is centripetal, so it always points to the center. And it's not some sort of new force. It's just a special way of finding the net force. So, okay. so before we do a problem, remember, here is something you should draw down, or draw out, okay? You should draw a circle and four dots, okay? The velocity is always tangent to the circle, meaning here's the radius, and this is a right angle. All of these are right angles, right? So that is your tangent, that's your velocity. Your acceleration, and therefore your force, always point in the same direction, and they are both centripetal, which means they point to the center, both the force and the acceleration, both. Okay, the force and the acceleration. F and A is what that means right there. All right, okay, copy this. And then we'll do our last problem. Okay, so the ladybug has a mass of 0 0.001 kilograms, is going at a speed of 3.77 meters per second, and we know its acceleration is 2.367 meters per second squared. Let's write all this down. Our mass is over here. Oh, mass is equal to 0 0.001 kilograms. Our uh, velocity, tangentially, is 3.77 meters per second. And our acceleration is 236.7 meters per second squared. What is the force we're experiencing? looking for our centripetal force. Here's everything. Sorry, this bugs me, guys. I hate it when I have bad handwriting. I'm sorry. Easier to read. Well, this is easy. Same equation. Force equals mass times acceleration, which means our force is equal to our mass, 0 0.001, times our acceleration, 236.7. And you multiply these two together, and you get a centripetal force equal to 0 0.2367 newtons, which I would actually round down to 0 0.24. Ta-da! And that's how you find centripetal force. Again, the big thing you're going to see here is you might have to calculate it. And to do that, you just need the centripetal acceleration. I gave you the equation to find that, right? The other thing you need to remember is how they point. They are centripetal. So the force and the acceleration point to the center. The velocity is tangential, so it's always at a right angle to the radius. Write this down. Okay, and one last example before I let you guys go is I can show you some real life examples of uh, centripetal forces, again, whenever you turn, the force is always pulling you towards the center, right? Now, I'm going to show you guys something. This scares me. I want you guys to hear this. Everybody can hear? There's water in there, okay? So this is a fun example here. I'm going to drink some of this water. All right. Hopefully, I don't break a window. Here's centripetal force. Ready? Oh, you want to see it again? Notice, can you see that? There's still water in there, all right? Why did the water not fall out? The water did not fall out because there's a centripetal force pointing towards the center. Now, you're probably sitting there going, wait a second, you're telling me the force is going this way? It's going towards the center? That can't be. The water is getting pushed up, okay? I understand that you think that. 
Because I used to think that. That makes the most sense. Which way is the force going? Well, the force has got to push it this way because the water is not falling down. That's not what's happening. What happens is, is that the water, if you were able to see inside of this cup, actually looks like this. It's up at an angle against that side. Because what's really happening is the force is pulling the water down. But as the cup swings, it catches the water every nanosecond. The water wants to fall down, but the cup goes, nope, 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 nope. And it keeps grabbing it and pushing it against the side of the cup. This is the same reason why when you're going around in your car, it feels like the force is pulling you out, but really what's happening is the force is pulling you in, and then the car is changing directions, which pushes you up and against the side of the car. It's weird, I know, but trust me, it is true. The force goes towards the center. Uh, the last one I'll give you guys, and I'm sure you remember this. If you've ever been to the State Fair and you've been on the Gravitron, this is that thing that spins around, it sticks you to the wall. You feel like the force is pushing you against the wall. What's happening is the force is pushing you in, and then you turn so the wall catches you. So the next time you're on it, notice that you really feel the force against one of your shoulders up against the wall. Okay? And this is a really fun ride. Uh, the next time we have a State Fair, you should go on. Okay, guys. That is it for the lecture. Make sure that you uh, copy down the notes, make sure that you use them, and that you get at least a 70 on your DOL. If you got any questions, you can email me. Have a great day.